Okay, hi everyone. This is uh, just intended to be a short demo, not a tutorial. I've been uh, experimenting and learning a few different programs that run in VR using a head-mounted display. And this one's called Gravity Sketch. And one of the things that's uh, got me the most excited is the potential to use this in beginning design studios and landscape architecture. Uh, I think traditionally, you know, we've kind of taken a hands-on approach in those early years, and we use pencil and paper, and of course, one of our favorites, uh, the Craft Smart uh, Plastina modeling clay. And you know, this or something like it's been around for lots of years, right? I think, uh, from what I understand, using clay for modeling pottery has been around for 18,000 years, and using clay to model figurines, design models, have been around for nearly 30,000 years. So <clears throat> I hope to show you that maybe uh, after all that time, we might be able to come up with a better way to uh, teach beginning design and model. And one of the most important things about this is in VR, you, it has presence. It's as close as you can get to reality. And you don't have to think about technique of using a pencil or a pen or even clay. So what I want you to do is right now start in your head and imagine that you're about to take this clay out of its wrapper and start softening it up a bit, working it onto your chipboard or plywood base uh, to begin start thinking about a design idea for a simple site. And we're gonna, I'm gonna go through the process of showing how this type of software can, in VR can be used to work through landform, paths, structures, and plants. Again, I'm not gonna explain everything I do. I've got, uh, you know, two controllers here. This is the tool controller. This has kind of the menu. It has the palette of, of tools on it. Um, and I'll explain some of these as I go along. But again, nice thing is I can draw, I can walk around, and I can get myself inside here, any scale. But again, I'm, I'm going to go through the process and start by working with landform. And to do that, let's just back out. <coughs> and uh, you see, as we've already seen, we've been down in this space, but this is what it looks out like simply. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just grab this panel that I brought in from SketchUp, this surface, convert it into a subdivision um, entity. And now you can see I've got this grid of shapes. And uh, I can go in here, and with this controller, I can select it, choose Edit, and... Uh, I can select the size of my selection sphere, and I'm just going to start grabbing some of these edges and pulling them up. So I can make this bigger, maybe tilt it a little bit here. How about another high point over here? And maybe one over here. Again, make any shape that I want. Also, one of the cool things about this is you have different modes. So right now I'm switching over to the surface mode and I can grab this and if I click the trigger, then I can start pulling other surfaces off. So you can really quickly create some landforms if you wanted to, uh, I don't know, make something that kind of goes over the side. You just keep clicking. I can use the controller to make this smaller. Okay, so you can see already starting to work this through. Now, of course, landform maybe should be a little bit smoother. So, um, and, and in places I might want a little more detail. So I'm going to grab this again. So I come down here, switch my modes to points, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I can start adding some other lines in here. And therefore, I can get inside here if I want to start creating... And I'll make this a little bit smaller. Start creating a terrace. And another one in here. And another one in here. And of course, I can come in here and individually move these points to create transitions through all those. I'm going to grab this and level that up a little bit. Okay, and then one of the things I can do with this really quickly is just come in and say, okay, I want to smooth this off. I'm going to switch this to smooth mode, and now you can see that all those edges have just become rounded, and I click OK there, and I'm ready to go. So that's just a quick idea of how you can create landforms. I could also build landforms with several tools that I have. 
Um, let's just click another one so you can see this here. Uh, this is a, a solid tool, and I'm just going to create a shape. And then I can come in there, and I could just start placing that. If I want to make it smaller, I can do that. So if I just want to use a, kind of an additive approach, whether that's boulders or just a quick abstract way, like you would start with clay and just start adding pieces on. I decide, well, I'm getting a little close to my man there. I'm going to move these out of the way, push that back a little bit. Move this one over here. Okay, that way I can pull my path back there. Maybe I'll bring this one over here. Okay, so that just, again, and I could do this with abstract um, regular primitive forms like cylinders or, or cubes or whatever, but that's just kind of a quick way to start thinking about how you can build up landform. I could also create depressions if I want to grab this, edit again. I can sink that in, stretch that out a little bit. Uh, if I can really have unlimited control of how you shape and form this landform. And the great thing is this is just like the type of editing you might do eventually in SketchUp or Rhino. This can, it supports NURBS, it supports polygons, it supports subdivision objects, as you can see here. All right, so let's go on to paths. And we teach our students often that a path is simply a, a line through the landscape. So let's put a line through the landscape. I'm going to pull up my stroke tool, make a square profile on it. And then I come in here and make this a little bigger and maybe I'll make another color just so it's a little more visible. All right. Now, one of the things I'm going to do with this, you can draw like a pencil. I'm just going to use a point method. So I'm just going to drag this one out and stop that there. And now I can come in and grab that, edit it just like the other one, and I can come in here and start curving this around. And every time I click, I'm just going to go through up around to the All right, just trying to snap back in here. I'll move that right back and maybe now maybe we'll just delete that one. There we go. So now it's not quite fitting perfectly, but I have a couple options to edit this. If I click on uh, this option, I can I pull the, the normals up for this so I can affect the, the orientation of this path. If I click that again, I can come in and just move these around, up and down. And of course, I can either try and adjust the path so that it fits fits the landform, or I can come back and adjust the landform so it fits the path a little bit better. All right, pull this one back down, this one back down. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. But again, if I'm happy with that, I could come in here, edit this, and just start pulling these points up until they start matching landform. If I need to put another line in there, I can pull that back down. Okay, so again, really quick way to edit, uh, to reshape the, both the landform and the pathway, and you can see how that's now kind of wrapping around. Uh, if I wanted to add stairs or something like that up that hill, I could start that by using a primitive and maybe just a plain square. And I'm going to drag this out. And maybe that's not quite. You now let's try a different one. A little more of a square proportion. There we go. Now I can zoom in here, pull this down in the landscape, and come right off my. Again, I don't really have to understand anything about drawing. There's six tools in here, 
and you simply work in 3D space and make what you want, what you're, what you're visualizing. Okay, now I can come back and adjust it in there. Um, sorry. Another thing I could do if I wanted to create a, like a, a bridge over between two hills, uh, I have an option to do that with another tool. It's actually a really cool tool called the surface tool and I can adjust the profile of it. I'm just gonna use these two lines and I come in here, let's just try and make a, All right, so I just get down underneath, see if that looks like. I can grab it, kind of adjust it so it fits where I want it to. And then let's say I wanted some railings on the side of that. I can come in here and edit that as well, convert that into a um, subdivision object. And now I can just select the, the entire edge, just drag that up. Same with this one, pull the trigger, drag it up. Now I've got some edges to that. Again, then I can manipulate that, scale it, move it around so maybe it comes in down here a little bit more. Grab this, pull it down. Grab that one, move it around. Let's move this one over. Okay, so that's some quickly a landform, some pathways. And I've got a couple trees here, and they can be, um, you know, again, keeping this simple like we would a, a kind of a rip and tear model. I can just grab these trees and start, uh, maybe that's a little big here. I can click the trigger and start placing those in. Change the size a little bit. And you can bring in uh, trees that aren't solid, that are just branching patterns if you want. And maybe the evergreen tree. Scale that down a little bit. Again, super fast. You're just exploring your ideas. You're seeing what it, the elements that you want to use. And uh, you can work on this model like this from sitting up above. Let's put, let me put some in here. But the coolest thing about working in uh, VR is that I'm not limited to the hovering above this in a godlike orientation, which is the only option I have in a clay model. I can never get down in there and really see what it feels like. But here, uh, with a quick click, I'm down here at ground level, and I can see exactly what this looks like. And if I want to get up there, well, use the magic banana. I can walk right up this pathway. and take a look around and see what it looks like. I can jump down there, walk across my bridge, turn around and take a look at it from any vantage point, any orientation. So it's such a powerful way to actually experience your design idea, not just to help generate them, but then to walk through them. And if I wanna move something out of the way from here, I don't, I can still edit this completely. Let's say I'm gonna move this a little closer to the walkway. I wanna create a copy of it, slide it around. Maybe I want it a little bigger so it's up over my head and it makes me feel more enclosed. I can do all that from whatever vantage point I want. And I really feel like I'm in the space and I'm not limited by uh, any technique or particular material. So hopefully this is short, quick, but uh, I just wanted to do something to be able to pass around and show you the potential of this. And the cool thing about this is, well, it's pandemic proof. Um, I'm using Oculus Quest headset. Uh, right now to record it, it's plugged into my computer, but this works wirelessly and Gravity Sketch runs on it without being plugged in even to a computer, as long as you charge it up. and the academic uh, corporate version of this has a co-creation mode. So I can, you can have up to 10 people working within this space 
and modifying it and changing at the same time and interacting with it. So a faculty could give a student a critique, students could work together on a project, and you could both be in the space and real-time editing whenever you want it and the ability to get inside the space and really see what it's like. So you can focus on the design aspects, not the graphic aspects of it. It was just going back and reviewing one of my favorite graphics books that's called Drawing Shortcuts by Jim Leggett. It's a great book. It's really focused on using designs to help you create and communicate, or using drawings to help design and communicate your, your ideas. The, but when you actually look at the book, it's about 250 pages. 50 of them talk about the usefulness of drawings as design tools. The other 200 pages are all about technique. How do you hold a pencil? What's the difference between a pencil and a pen? How do you use color? What kind of, you know, how big should the sketch be? How do you do composition? Uh, that's another cool thing about this. If I come down in here and get back to my, my vantage point and I want to create some views of this, I can just click here, grab my camera, point and click. All right, just took a shot right there. I want to look around the other way. Maybe I need to put some water or pond in there. I can adjust the, the uh, telephoto, take another shot got a picture so uh, and if you want to see what the uh, what your design looks like orthographically you just click on this button here and now I've got plan and elevation so I want to pull this off I can just grab that pull it off there there's the top view I want to get a side view there it is so instead of working from these abstract orthographic views to figure out the design you're actually working in the space manipulating the objects as directly as it's possible to do and then create those two-dimensional images uh, once you've got it completed so hopefully this will be this will be helpful and uh, we can talk more about this later